ask you one quick political question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, the, the militia movements and so forth. A lot of fundamental Christians are gravitating towards some of these movements. Uh -huh. Is there any provision from God's Word, as oppressed as the, the, the church is and the Word, to ever take up arms against your government? All right. Get First Peter chapter five, one hand. First Peter chapter five, one hand. And get. Uh, I'll make it five. Better make it. Uh, oh, better make it. No, uh, make it two. Yeah. Uh, First Peter chapter two, and then get Revelation chapter uh, thirteen. And then get uh, Romans chapter 13, out of 13 in here. And there's what it says. Now the rule of this thing is, Render to see the thing that are seated unto God, the thing that are God's. And the rule in Romans 13 is obedience to the government. All government authority. And then what will happen if you don't? Now first of all, let's read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse uh, 17, Simon Peter. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and underline this, honor the king. You know you know what, who was king then when he wrote that? Nero. Nero. Yeah. A dean of less murder. Honor the king. Now the rebuttal of that for the patriot is we're not under a king, we're under the constitution. That won't do. The constitution no longer in effect. You say, when did it go out of effect? It went out of effect in 1865. Some folks get kind of slow about waking up to know what's going on. <laughs> in 1865, the Constitution was done away with. And here's how the, the three men, Abraham Lincoln, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Martin Luther King Jr., that get rid of the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights, the Tenth Amendment of the Bill of Rights, and the Gun Control of the Second Amendment. And the trick is the way to do it with all the rights under the Civil Rights Act. The Civil Rights Act of the Alabama for getting rid of all the rights. Now here's how the, the Constitution goes, why it's no longer in effect. In 1861, the South decided to uh, secede from the Union. The Union. United States. Like United Nations. Union. Like Union of Soviet Socialistic Republics. And when Lithuania and Latvia and Estonia decided to secede from the Union of Soviet Republics about two years ago, the paper said, get to it, boys, good work, hooray for us, freedom fighters, da 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 On the South side, right. the paper said, rebellion, rebellion, rebellion. The papers have a double standard. And anyway, the South said, we're going to get out. Up to that time, the newspaper reporter said, uh, the United States... Uh, have this, they have decided to do this. The United States, they have decided to do this. It's a plural. You learn that in the second grade. States is plural. From the Civil War on, the United States was never referred to again in the plural. But nobody picked that up. It's just, I mean, the bigger the belt, the more room for the bats. So after 1865, it come the United States, it decided this, it or she decided that, she decided that it was singular. Which means that the United States in 1865, the states lost their independency and they're no longer states. They're a union. If you fought for the union, you fought to preserve the union. When, when Lincoln was asked about that, he said, well, the, somebody said, aren't you overthrowing the Constitution? He said, yes, but the union was before the Constitution. So he so said, the union takes precedent over the Constitution. The main thing is not the preservation of the Constitution. The main thing is the preservation of the Union. That's what went on. So an old poor regard down there at the battery in, say, in South Carolina, Charleston, fired out at Fort Sumter. Oh, honest Abe, bless his heart, sends a merchant marine down the Chesapeake Bay loaded with guns and ammunition. What for? To attack the state of South Carolina. He's not sending them down there to attack Maryland. They're going out of South Carolina. You say, why? There's an island off the coast of South Carolina. Who does it belong to? There's the question. Does it belong to South Carolina or Washington, D.C.? Why do you think so? It isn't anywhere near Washington, D.C. But it's federal. As in your bureau of alcohol, tobacco, and power. <laughs> 
So out of Oklahoma City, you have a building out there, and it doesn't belong to Oklahoma. It belonged to Washington, D.C. Now, you Yankees, none of your forefathers fought in the war. God bless them. But they sure fought for a putrid cause because you lost your shirt when they won. <laughs> All the land in Ohio belongs to the federal government, including this land here. You don't believe it? Wait till they bring up a court case. You don't believe your house belongs to the federal government? Just don't pay your income taxes for a while. Watch what happens. Now, the Civil War settled that. The Civil War settled all the land area in America belonged to the federal government in Washington, D.C. That's what that thing settled. If the militia <coughs> wanted to uh, start something right now, they'd probably have to attack a federal installation, say a National Guard armory, or a munition dump, or a National Guard, uh, a National Guard uh, motor pool. And the question is, who does it belong to? The military installation in Ohio, who do they belong to? They belong to Washington, D.C. And the chief and commander of the National Guard is not in Ohio. He's in Washington, D.C. So if, uh, if the chief and commander uh, the chief and command wants to kill you, he <coughs> take your brother or your husband or your uncle or your daddy to kill you with it by the National Guard. He'll activate the National Guard to kill you in your own state. He'll sit back there and, well, let's bring you this new age, you know. Okay. Thank you, Hillary, you want to that. Now, that's what you got going. So the Constitution is a joke. It's a joke. It has no application to anything. But the right-wing fundamentalists and the militias, the Constitution, the Constitution, we go with the Constitution. There isn't any Constitution. There hasn't been any Constitution for years and years and years, and isn't right now. Amen. The first time you think there is, you just cross a step on the EPA or something, you watch what happens. Down there in Alabama, I'm in a gun shop, and here's two fellows talking. One of them says, they came in day, the other day took 17 acres of my land right in the middle of the land. I paid for that, my daddy paid for that, been paid for for years. They took 17 acres, a stream ran through it. Yeah. And somebody said, what's going on? Said, that, they said, that's wetland. And he said, how can I keep it? They said, you've got to fill the stream in. He said, my cows drink out of that stream. They said, okay, if you keep it, then it's federal property. And they can kill him for trespassing to federal property. If he comes there to get a drink, they can shoot him for walking on his own land he's paid for. Who set that up? Old honest Abe Lincoln from Illinois, boy. The old honest fella. So your constitution is gone. So your, your argument that we're to honor a king, and he said, honor the king, that ain't going to work. You're going to have to honor the powers that be, and the powers that be right now are not the constitution. The powers that be right now are the CIA and the CFR, and the Environmental Protective Agency, the Bilderbergers, the Club of Rome, the Illuminati, the European Community, the National uh, Education Association, the National Council of Christian Churches, the NACP, and the American Civil Liberty Union. That's what you're under. You're under what we call an oligarchy. All right, a couple more. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Now, suppose you decide to rebel and fight. All right, Revelation 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here the patience of faith the saints, 1310. So if you're going to make an attempt to overthrow, you can expect to die. Romans chapter 13. We'll finish it up here, Romans 13. Now the choice is yours what you want to do. Christ says, the last time I sent you, did you lack anything? They said, No. He said, I told you the first time not to take anything with you. Now, this time you better sell what you have and buy you a sword. And they said, here are two swords. Said, okay, that's enough. That's, that's okay. Put them away. Two swords. A little bit later out there in the garden, they get ready to uh, arrest Jesus Christ. And they come in there and Peter pulls out the sword. So at the sword play. And the Lord says, pull up the sheath. And that just, that just eats him. And he said, put up the sheath. He just said, get one. <laughs> I got one, here we go. And the Lord said, No, I bought I told you to get that for self defense, not yeah. my defense. There you go. Amen. So that sword was for self defense. Self defense is legitimate. Self defense is legitimate. Now the question comes up, what about overthrowing the government? Well the problem comes up, what what happens when the government attacks you? Like they're doing now every day. Amen. Every day the BATF is going to the homes and killing the wrong people. They've done that twice. Causing women to lose pregnancy, they've done that twice. 
at one time caused an old Negro minister up in New York to have a heart attack, and it was the wrong apartment. Mm -hmm. So sorry, you know. And what they're, they're outside the law. So what happens when they come to kill you? That's the question. They shot Randy Weaver's wife out there in Boise, Ohio. She wasn't carrying a twenty-two. She wasn't overthrowing the government. She didn't have a slingshot on her. She carrying a baby. And they murdered her. You say, who was arrested? Nobody. You say, who had the day of memorial for the poor man? Nobody. You slick Willie said, let's have prayer for the... <laughs> no, what, a, what, a, what a hypocrite. Not for Randy Weaver's wife. They just killed her and walked off and brag about her. Out in Waco, Texas, they murdered 17 minor children. Not 12. 12 Oklahoma. 17 Waco. It's what to do about it. They brag about it. They brag about it. We did a good job and have to do it again. Who's going to remember the little ones? Nobody. Who interviewed the mothers? Nobody. Who called out the minister? Nobody. What did the chief of police say? Nothing. What did the sheriff call in? Nothing. What did the governor contribute? Nothing. Was Billy Graham there? No, he wasn't there. See? So what you have is licensed killers that are out to get you. Now, self-defense is legitimate. And we've got something else to do here in a minute. I'll say this in passing. Uh, when I was a young man coming up, my heroes were bank robbers. Uh, my daddy thought I had a criminal mind, and maybe I do. <laughs> but, but I like the bank robbers. I always did. I think I do right now. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, to me, banks are crooked. Yeah. Well, I, I don't, I, I lose my religion in a bank or a power company or a telephone company, we're in any place in the world. Because they walk in there and look around, they're all women. Well, that's a violation of civil rights law. Where's your quarter? That's the first thing that's wrong. And the second thing is wrong, the women, when they're on jobs, have a way of taking orders and carrying out orders, but they're limited to the orders. They have no ability to adjust. Have you ever noticed that in dealing with uh, airplane ticket counters and bank tellers? Probably didn't. It's kind of like where they drive. <laughs> you know, uh, when they let the women on the highway, they, they, they uh, triple the, 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 uh, the death rate, and it's uh, the men that get killed. Because <laughs> the women are always extra careful, that's the defensive drive, that's what causes males to get killed. But you know, yeah, I'll get back to this minute. But you know, you know what the Guinness Book of Records said? The worst car wreck that ever took place took place in LA Freeway, and a woman caused it and drove on, didn't know what happened behind her. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a 71 car pilot. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> that lady driving down the street, she signaled like this, and she signaled like that. And she signaled like this, and she went. <laughs> and if a Coleman come along behind and said, Lady, what in the world were you doing? She said, Well, I wanted to turn, and I signaled left, and suddenly realized I should have gone right, so I signaled right. But she said, I realized I had to stop before I made the turn, so I signaled stop. And she then I realized I messed up so bad, I just erased it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I like these bank robbers. I like Pretty Boy Floyd, Machine Gun Kelly, and Alvin Carpus, and Homer Van Meter, and Babyface Nelson, that bunch. And I always didn't like those fellows. I guess because I thought banks were crooked. I still think they're crooked. I never changed my mind that. But then when I got, when I got a little bit older, I got into the mafia. And I liked, uh, you know, Mad Dog Vincent Cole, and Dutch Schultz, you know, and Luciano, and Genovese, and uh, Meyer Lansky, and all those boys got studying them. And Lansky and uh, Luciano said something that I consider one of the most profound things that I've ever said in history. They, they sent him back to Italy, uh, repatriated him, an undesirable citizen. He died over there, had a heart attack in an airport. And Luciano, he died of old age, you know, after, you know, just setting up the drug traffic. And he set up the Palermo Golden Crescent, Golden Triangle thing. Now it's about $500 billion a year. Anyway, right before he died, they said, Luciano, they said, if you had to do it all over again, would you do anything different? And he said, yeah, I would. Immediately. He said, what's that? He said, I'd get a license. I'd get a license. Now, that's profound. You know, those, you know what those mafia believe? They believe there are two kinds of mafia. Licensed mafia and unlicensed mafia. And your BATF, DA, and SWAT teams are licensed mafia. They're licensed to operate outside the law. So is the CIA. Those are outlaws. They don't obey the laws. But they're licensed. Now, your problem is getting a license. <laughs> oh, 
All right, uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the higher powers, plural. That's governors, mayors, smoking, patrolmen, sheriffs. There is no power, including the devil, but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God, including the devil. The, the devil gets his power from God, from Israel. That doesn't mean God approves of it. When God lets a man like Hitler take over Germany, that doesn't mean that God approves of fascism and Nazism. But God will allow the fellow. In Daniel, he says, God will set up over the kingdoms the basest of men, meaning Nebuchadnezzar, a killer. Now, God will do it. And the powers will be ordained of God. That's the hard part. God will let a, a country have bad rulers. A man said to me one time, he said, in a democracy, the people get a ruler who's most representative of the average of the country. Now, if that's true, we're in rough shape. Yes, we're in rough shape. I heard a fellow the other day, he said, uh, God, God, God's not going to kill Slick, will he? He's not going to be assassinated. I said, why not? He said, God's going to use that man to bring judgment to America with him. Down south, you see license, a bumper sticker to say, Lee Oswald, where are you when we need you? <laughs> <laughs> I heard a fellow say one time, he said, I think Slick Willie's the greatest evangelist that ever lived. He said, he's done more to get Christian prayer for the second coming of Christ than any president he ever had. And that's true. That's true. All right, two. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, any power, resist the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive themselves damnation. That's temporary, not eternal, but it's, it's damnation, condemnation. For rulers not of terror to good works, at least they shouldn't be. But to the evil, at least they should be. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Yeah, you better have. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have afraid of the same. Normally, yes. In fact, words, normally the sheriff and the highway patrolman, the police out there, are not out there to arrest you if you're doing good. They're out there to arrest you if you're doing bad. And that explains why you always be looking more in the rearview mirror when you go past the speed limit. <laughs> have you ever noticed that? When you drive another speed limit, you very rarely glance in the rearview mirror. But when you get over the speed limit, you, you know, check it out once in a while. <laughs> what is that? That's conscience sake. Uh, verse, uh, verse 5. Not only for wrath, but for conscience sake. Bad conscience. One night I got a stolen car. And I was, uh, when I was a young man, I was hit before the hippie hippie was. And I... I'm going out the window at night and pushing the car down the street where they can't hear it start and waiting an electric bus goes by and covers up the noise. And I'm taking this stolen car to a gas pump. A guy can't lock up. I know who it is. And I'm getting me a tank full of gas and driving down to Kansas City. That's across the border in a wet state. And then I'm bootlegging liquor back to the other side. I was 17 years old. Nothing but the best. And one night I'm coming back there. I got two girls in the back. I think 13, 15 years old, underage. And just, you know, just, or just, Unsaved, you nuts, you know what you're doing, you're a cotton picking fool. And I'm driving back here at night and I pass a patrol car. I know I'm passing because I've been out on the road, you know, messing around them so much that I've, I learned it some tricks. If you go by a car, you get peripheral vision and you can see the, you know, the insignia going by, and you see the light going by past your headlight. And I saw him go by and he was a patrolman. And so I went out there watching him real careful. He didn't put any brake lights on, so I figured it was okay. And I went on. And if they put on the brake lights, then you turn off your lights and head off right angle and try to get in the resident, residential district you can. Make a couple of sharp turns, put in the driveway, short distance, and lie down in the back seat, or the front seat. <laughs> you get by that way. So I'm, I'm watching the rear view mirror and he didn't put any brake lights, so I go on. And boy, about 15 minutes later, right like behind the car, man. I'm telling you, this day, those signs just give me goose pimples. I haven't been doing anything wrong like that, but just for that, those ones that go, whoop, 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 they don't bother you so bad. Those ones that go, oh boy, I'm telling you, man. Uh, you never heard one of them, you heard it five feet behind your car. And boy, there are the lights, and I pull over, and man, I go down there to the station, they got me for a statutory kidnapping, federal offense, stolen car with no license, across the state border, federal offense, and bootlegging liquor. Three federal offenses. And my dad comes down there about three o'clock in the morning, and man, there's a horn coming out of his bathrobe, you know, and argues them. And I am arguing there. <laughs> After they've been arguing a while, I hear the fellow say, 
All right, uh, Colonel Ruckman, he's underage, so we're going to let him go one more time. But this fellow's been giving us trouble now for three years. One more time, he goes to industrial school. That's a, a reformatory. We go out the door, you know, and Dad's mad, you know, and cussing and roaring and stomping, you know. They get home and got out of it. You stick that thing right there, that thing there comes from that bad conscience. See, I'm looking at that mirror all the time because I know I got the wrong load. <laughs> And that's when you get looking at that mirror. Oh, and I'm going to wind this thing up. The rulers are there to protect the good and punish the bad. The way our country is going, our country is going with the rulers there to protect the bad and punish the good. That's how they're going. Their job is to let a criminal out and arrest the policeman. Right now they're going to federalize the police. Which means now the police department belongs to Washington, D.C. I know the police officers. I preach in the churches. I've got my bad in my congregations. They tell me what's going on. There's a movement among the police officers called Operation, I think, Vampire Killer or something, Operation like that, for the local police to see what's going on and then to get together and fight the feds. You've got a setup. You're getting a setup for a civil war, is what you get. Yeah. And that's how it happened the first time. But you see, this time you can't win. Because this time, all the ground belongs to the federal government. You take down where I am, there's a naval air station right down there. And there's, a, there's Eglin Field and Berkeley Field down there. Now, where is that? It's in Florida. Well, Berkeley's in Alabama. Berkeley, Alabama, Eglin in Florida, and naval air station in Florida. Now, that's Florida land. But the commander in chief in Washington activates the troops on there. You couldn't get in there without a war, a bloodshed, bloodshed war to get in there, because it isn't your land. You say it's in Florida. The land in Florida, I keep telling you, man, don't belong to Florida. The Civil War fixed that. And it wasn't just the Southerners that lost. Boy, you Yankees, you lost Indiana and Illinois and Pennsylvania and Ohio and Michigan and with it. As a matter of fact, you lost as quicker as we did. Down there. Folks down there are still a bit more than family are up here. They got you, boy, they got you the hair short. And it's been that way for years and years and years. Now, you cannot do it and win. Let's understand that. You're allowed an option. And the option, if you want to do it, then you better expect uh, what you're going to get. Here's what you're going to get. Verse 4. He is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that to thee, will be afraid, for it beareth not the sword, it's going to cut off your head. In vain, for he is the minister of God. He's a minister. A law enforcement officer is a minister. A revenger to execute wrath upon him to do with evil. So you've got to make up your mind, am I going to die or am I not going to die? Because what you're going to do is worthy of death, and that's what you're going to get. Now the question is a matter of timing. And I keep telling my young men that, and they all they already jump the gun. They always want to go, go, go. And I understand it. I understand it. But gentlemen, if you ever get this time, you're going to have to make up your mind to do. You're going to have to make up your mind, I'm about to lose my house and my wife and my kids and my life, what more can I lose? You have to look at it from a soldier's viewpoint. I'm not going to fight for the dear old flag, because that's a joke, and the Constitution, because that's a bunch of rubbish. And I wouldn't want to lay down my for slick willy, you know, anymore I would for a dead rat, but I'd die for my wife and kids. So the question is, when you get ready to die, you'll make up your mind, now I'm not going to come out of this alive. I'm going to die, I'm ready to die, and make up your mind, going to die. Now you can't, you can't have illusions about it. When this time, when the time comes, you can't say, well, I'll do this and this and get away here. No, no, I'm going to die. Scripture's real clear on it. <laughs> the question is, is it worth it? If it's worth it, then step in and try to get a kill ratio of at least three to one. Five to one would be better. And what they intend to do now, as Clinton intends to do, is, in, he says, infiltrate the groups. That's the communist cell movement. He's a communist. And what he means is, put a person in Hope Baptist Church, morning here, Brother Ruffin, one woman at night to pick up your pastor when he preaches, and then one running in the school, and then one running on the bench where you work down there at the factory, and then one running the police department, and then bug the house, and then pick up this stuff, and infiltrate you know, to get the private sector. And if you can find that in the Constitution, I'm a monkey uncle. That's censorship of free speech. 
and he said, to get in here, I'm in the middle of you to get you. So when the time comes, your best bet will not to be to hold up like Korish and, and Rachel. That's a bad move. Nobody today can abide siege because they have infrared and they got nap on the helicopters. You can't hide out anywhere. You're 30 feet underground, they got bombs that'll go down, you know, 20 feet before the bust off. With the technology, you're not going to be able to handle it, no matter who you are. And the idea of attacking Randy Weaver out there in, in Idaho was real simple. They wanted to show you that when you run in the wilderness to get away from the civilization, they'll get you out there. You see, it's Oklahoma City in the west, Waco, Texas in the west, Idaho in the west, now they're working in Montana while in the west, that stuff. What they're trying to tell you is that you don't, you can't run, or we'll come out there and get you. And it's true. It's true. So when the time comes, your best tactic would not be to hold up or dig in or try anything that they're trying. That ain't going to work. Your best possible tactic would be the one they're using right now. You'd have to infiltrate. That'd be your best bet. Your best bet would be to <clears throat> get you some, get your camouflage suit. Dye it black, <clears throat> get your ski mask and put some letters in the back of it, and then join the boys. And you said, if I know who I'm in, they'll kill me. That's the idea. You're going to figure that ahead of time. <laughs> Aren't we talking about peasant things this morning in the Baptist church? <laughs> That's the question. <clears throat> so to answer that question is this. There is no authority in the scripture for rebelling against the government or overthrowing the government. Amen. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're spiritual. Yes. So we shouldn't be involved in an active effort to overthrow the government. But by the same token, if the time comes when you have to defend yourself or defend your wife, your children, your property, you should be able to do it the best of your ability. And with the government coming up the way, you should be prepared to die because that's their intent, intent to kill you. You see, what for? Take your property. We call this the USSA, the Unified Search and Seizure of Assets. No way it works is that is under the pretense of peacekeeping and the law and the war and crime, they're going to set up a thing where they can kill you and your wife and children on the grounds of rumor. They just did. You talk to people like this and they think, what is he prophesying? I ain't prophesying nothing. They never proved child abuse on cause. They never proved he had the wrong weapon. The guy buying the weapon was licensed by the, by the government to buy the weapon. The whole thing was rumor and then murder following rumor. And nobody's arrested. That's what's going to happen to every one of us, the Lord tarries. Now I'll close this cheerful note. <laughs> 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 Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. And I only hope is straight up. Amen. And if you're not, if that, you got to, if, if you only hope, if you don't go straight up, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're going to get killed. They're going to be after Christians. Mm -hmm. That's you. Could be a, Janet Reno put out a, a, a notification of the justice in Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Carolina more than a year ago saying in cases of uprising, fundamentalists should be considered as terrorists. Time magazine. The face of a terrorist. A white adult Protestant male. And they're, they're setting up. And our only hope is for us to get out. I've laid awake tonight and thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And uh, nothing you can do. I mean, <clears throat> you can get you a helicopter and get a nuclear warhead, you know, and go to the Vatican and get them all in one shot, you know. Or you can wait till all the big shots from Washington gather together and get them all in one shot. And when you do, they'll just replace them yeah. in 24 hours, and they'll make martyrs out of them. Yeah. <coughs> Memorial Day, and then name the, the streets, you know, Martin Luther King Boulevard, you know, or Elvis Presley Boulevard, you know, fellow dope himself into hell and name the Boulevard after him. And there's nothing you can do. Uh, pastor, I was preaching in church one time. He talked about what a mess we're in. And when he got all through the janitor of the church, said to him, he said, preacher, this world ain't in a mess. And the pastor said, why it is too. It's the biggest mess you ever saw. And the janitor said, preacher, I've been cleaning up messes all my life. But he said, you can't clean up this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Our hope, brethren, is yeah, amen. a hole in the sky. Now you better start praying. I mean, really, you better start praying to go to bed at night. You better start praying, Lord, if you can make it tonight, make it tonight. 
Lord, if you're tired, don't make it later than 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> you better start praying. The Lord tired. She's going to get rough. All right, brother. Been here enough. Here's two and a half hours, about more than that. They had enough for one morning. Nothing like a Bible to clear up the college education.